Hello there, and welcome to Weird Music on the Glumberger channel. This is the course of show where we look at, you know, all sorts of, you know, uh, mostly weird experimental music of different kinds, you know, and have a discussion about them in some way or form. <laughs> um, so in today's episode, we will be returning to the lowercase genre with a look at an album that definitely delves into, you know, abstract experimentalism. And this is an artist we've actually mentioned a couple of times briefly on the channel before, but today we'll be finally diving into an album of theirs. So let's just get into it, shall we? Today, I present the one and only Bernard Gunther with a look at their 2001 album, Then Silence. So of course, let's ask ourselves the question, who is Bernhard Gunther? Well, Bernhard Gunther is a German post-Cajun composer, a term I only learnt when researching this, whose work is often associated with microsound, lowercase, and of course, minimalism. And formerly a rock and jazz drummer, Gunther studied at RIRCAM and began working with electronically generated sounds before moving his work into primarily sample-based work. As well as being the founder of the record label Trant Oiseau, Gunther uh, has over the years released an incredible number of albums, you know, both under his own name and through many collaborations with different artists, including uh, the likes of Jeff German and um, Steve Roden as well. <laughs> I think it's also worth noting, actually, on the subject of Steve Roden, that Gunther was responsible for the remastered version of Roden's seminal album Forms of Paper when it was re-released in 2011 on Richard Chartier's record label Lion Imprint. The remaster that uh, Gunther provided was apparently much more akin to Roden's original version of the album and, you know, remains probably one of the most well-known versions of the album to this day. And so in today's episode, we are, of course, talking, uh, taking a look and having a talk about Gunther's album, Then Silence, a release on his own record label, Trant Oiseau, in 2001. Uh, this is the very same label, by the way, that saw the release of Decisive Forms by Richard Charter, which we looked at in one of the earlier episodes of Weird Music. <laughs> So um, Then Silence, uh, the label's 11th official release, um, sees Gunther offering up an incredibly contemplative, minimalist, lowercase drone experience, sourced from piano uh, performances by one Reinhold Feidel. Friedel? Sorry, not too sure again, as always. <laughs> With Gunther reworking his, you know, performances and sounds into this incredibly long 38-minute album that guides its through various movements, punctuated by so much silence, and itself dedicated to composers Morton Feldman and Luigi Nono. It's an incredibly subtle album, and uh, one that I think actually has a rather ominous vibe, you know, throughout most of its runtime, but it is also, you know, moments of calm and, you know, and of course, moments of quiet. And as a result, it's an album that's incredibly rewarding to listen to. So let's dive into it then, shall we? Then Silence. Um, it opens up with this incredibly, you know, ominous, I find it, uh, ominous and deep undulating bass drone, accompanied by this peculiar echoing effect that fades in and out, itself accompanied by these, you know, rather unusual lowercase bumps that almost act like a percussion, though it's one that is so blurry and formless, I feel. <laughs> and that is until we get to the arrival of some incredibly unusual high-pitched drones that start to build up this rising sense of anxiety, you know? <laughs> like, I find with a, you know, often with the sort of lowercase genre, you'll find certain artists really playing around with frequencies, and you know, this is an album that really does so with these high-pitched ones, and 
For me, as a listener, when I hear them, I always just get this rising sense of anxiety. Um, weirdly enough, though, when it comes to the works of Franz Jobin, I find her work when she plays with high uh, pitch frequencies to bit, be a bit more calmer and subtle, but we will get into that in another episode when I finally get around to talking about her work. <laughs> in any case, the first few minutes of this competition are really quite something to behold though. Um, it becomes almost a bombardment, I feel, of these incredibly subtle droning layers pitched all differently to each other before it all fades away leading the scene towards something much more foreboding, I would say. <laughs> and I feel like it makes it come across as an intimidating track at times, you know, one that is, it's almost threatening you with its, you know, incredibly um, peculiar presence as it navigates across that incredibly lengthy runtime. And especially, it definitely feels odd when uh, and ominous when you get these just peculiar thud sounds of something, you know. I have no idea what's... Um, making these sounds. I feel like it might be a piano, but it's one that is so detuned and rusted that it barely feels like an instrument. And instead, it's just the mere skeleton of what once was. I should say, um, there is a moment uh, five and a half minutes in, as you can no, no doubt hear and have heard, when you just get bombarded with a really high-pitched drone that really rattles your skull as you listen to it. But fascinatingly, with this one, it's accompanied by this really deep rumbling drone as well, and as a result, hearing the two uh, played side by side with each other creates this really unique little experience within this composition that I find really fascinating. You know, offsetting, you know, the the, the high pitch drone with the low pitch drone and just joining it together, and it's just like, oh, it's very interesting indeed. <laughs> Um, the more this composition unfolds, though, the more it just continues to re uh, reveal new and exciting details. You know, the steady, unsettling thumps become more ominous and even less discernible. And it feels like perhaps uh, we've arrived at you know, some place that we definitely should not be, with it feeling like twists and turns around each and every corner. And this sort of low, rumbling drone ends up being offset by the most peculiar frequencies and tones, you know, creating this immersive experience that is constantly shifting around, before it then turns into these, you know, incredibly subtle droning layers once again. And as suggested by the album title as well, now I should have mentioned this a bit more, but there's some wonderful moments of silence on the recording that come in and out of the various moments, you know, almost guiding the composition from its movement to movement. You'll end up moving from these, you know, unsettling drones into pure silence itself. And then it will move itself into a new direction entirely, you know. Um, like, you'll, you'll get parts where you just get the almost careful thudding of almost atonal piano notes, um, which I feel must have been inspired by uh, the one and only Morton Feldman, right? <laughs> But this constantly shifting atmosphere just creates this wonderful um, listening experience where you can never guess where the composition is heading and it becomes one that will offer new passages um, the further you dive into it though. All somehow cohesively presenting the album's core concepts and ideas of course. And I have to say, the silence, it becomes so interesting, you know, and weirdly enough, it's almost as deafening as the high-pitched frequencies themselves, as they end up creating such an empty space within the composition that really highlights what precedes it and what follows it, if that makes sense. And with it being a rather long composition, there's so many movements that it all guides itself through, you know, going from quiet moments to louder moments to quiet moments again, and back and forth, back and forth, of course. And I find it fascinating, though, the, the name, then silence, you know, it becomes almost a focal point of this listening experience, you know. You get so many unusual and eerie passages that become punctuated by these silent movements, you know, giving us a pause to reflect upon them, until the silence itself is then broken by the introduction of a new musical passage. And it's as though, across the entire listening experience, we're giving this we're getting an almost overload of different forms of sound art, and then silence itself. 
and it becomes incredibly fascinating as we're guided through so many different places. There's so many different feelings, emotions, and concepts, I feel. They're all bringing with them this incredibly contemplative feeling that has you wondering about the intrinsic qualities of what ex is exactly we're hearing. Sometimes it's as though we're hearing a broken down piano that's just falling apart and can barely play its notes again. And other times it's almost like Phil Niblock levels of droning brass instruments. And other times these incredibly unusual rumbling drones that sound like the stillness of the outside world itself, you know? And what's he, what, there's even what sounds like the slow stretch of a string instrument, you know, its tones resonating within a room, breaking the silence before conforming to it entirely. I think it becomes incredibly fascinating and it's an almost existential experience though, know, as your mind just starts to wander around its own recesses, I feel. I feel like the best thing you can do with, you know, this kind of recording is just give it your time and your patience. And by doing so, you end up with this incredibly rewarding experience that guides you through this very interesting sound odyssey. And I find the movements that Gunther presents to be incredibly fascinating and it to be a very engrossing album experience as a result, you know. And I think as well, you know, as it is becoming a bit of a norm with these uh, experimental works, um, it's always best to just read out the line that's provided with the album, you know. Um, <laughs> I think, um, you know, as much as I try to sort of express uh, my feelings and stuff, sometimes it's best to say what the artist thinks about it, so, so we have some necessary context and understanding for what we're hearing. And um, then silence is uh, only accompanied by a short paragraph, and it doesn't tell us much regarding the process, but um, the details or explanations of exactly what it is we're hearing but it does provide context of what informed the composition itself. And so, in Gunther's uh, words, he tells us the following. Then Silence is dedicated to Morton Feldman and Luigi Nona. The experience of listening to their music has changed my understanding, my way of hearing, my thinking about, and my creating music so much that my own work would be simply unthinkable without it. Dedicating then silence to them, is my modest thank you to Morton Feldman and Luigi Nona, expressing not only my admiration, but also the sadness their untimely parting causes me. So yeah, an interesting portion of text I feel that gives us a lot of context for what the album represents in many ways. Um, a tribute to two experimental composers who really push the boundaries of experimentalism in many ways, I feel, and challenging common uh, preconceptions of how we perceive sound as well as what we think about sound when we hear it. <laughs> and as a result, listening carefully to this record is one that, as mentioned, becomes an, a rewarding experience as a result. And as well, it's one that becomes a bit of a rabbit hole if you decide to go and check out the respective artists the album is in tribute to. And I have to say, once again, as I mentioned so many times, you know, although I never understand these things on an academic level, I always try to consider and understand what it is I'm feeling when listening to particular experimental works. And listening to Then Silence, um, it instills an interesting array of emotions in me when I hear the recording, you know, one that seems to move around as much as the shifting composition itself. Some moments are ominous, creepy and scary, and others are melancholy and you know, very contemplative, of course. And I find it really fascinating, you know, when the composition reaches its closing minutes and slowly fades back into the recesses of silence once more, uh, we as a listener, you know, can end up finding ourselves just sitting there and absorbing the whole experience as we just sit within the very silence itself, you know, in, Weirdly enough, enjoying that silence that we're now listening to that was such an integral part of the very album experience. And so, and so yeah, I think with that, we will be coming to an end of today's episode of Weird Music then. Um, as someone who's been interested in the lowercase genre, you know, since, of course, and obviously, discovering it through Forms of Paper by Steve Roden, I have been fascinated in discovering more albums within the genre. And, with Then Silence being an incredibly intriguing album that highlights the importance of silence, you know, in an experimental recording, I feel. 
And I truly admire the way that Gunter has constructed this recording, you know, creating an experience that oddly foreboding and ominous, yet contemplative as it navigates along its, uh, its 38 minute runtime. You know, especially, you know, given the instruction of listening to it on, you know, quiet levels as well, it's incredibly subtle, you know, really subtle and you no know, quiet and stuff. But, and, and for me, it, it does for me what I think a good minimalist composition should do, which is simply exist as it is and reward you as a listener for discovering the experience within. And so, yeah, I think with that, I would like to thank you for watching today's episode of Weird Music then. I wish you all the best, take care, and bye-bye for now. Bye-bye.